Our culture is permeated with the idea of bank heists. We watch George Clooney and Johnny Depp steal on screen. We play video games where we ourselves are cast as the crooks. I can even remember playing games of cops and robbers when I was a kid. Yet, when you think about it, it's a terrible thing in reality. We remember the great gold robbery, the Loomis robberies, and the string of ATM cyber theft that happened not too long ago. But what most of us don't remember is one of the biggest bank heists in American history. A heist that happened right here in Northampton, Mass. In the early 1800s, most people in the Pioneer Valley didn't exactly trust the few banks that dotted the landscape. After all, giving money to a stranger to keep away from you in a place where you couldn't see it didn't seem like the best idea. Most people were more comfortable turning to their neighbors in times of need than going to a bank. Here, there was more than a set of keys keeping people out of the vaults. But in 1833, New England was slowly shifting from a barter system to a more modern monetary system, allowing for the growth of places like this, the Northampton National Bank. With the arrival of the railroad allowing Northampton to become the center of trade and industrialization, the bank quickly became an important part of Northampton's infrastructure. Now, it wasn't until the invention of the combination lock in 1861 that people really began to trust the banks. In 1874, Northampton National Bank decided to upgrade their security to the new locks, making their vaults entirely safe. Of course, if that's where the story ended, there wouldn't be a need to tell it. No, this is where we end the background and get to the real story. When the Northampton National decided to upgrade their security, they approached William Edson, a member of the Herring Safe Company, about the job. Edson installed the new locks for the bank, and everything went fine. The following year, in November of 1875, Edson returned to the bank and discussed security with the management. In order to make a better fitting key, Edson made a wax copy. He also agreed with the manager that the only person who should know the combination of the vault was the cashier. Both of these made perfect sense to increase the security of the bank. Imagine the surprise of the bankers when, two months later, on January 26, 1876, they woke up to an empty vault. How could this have happened? How could somebody break into the vault and make away with the money? It's actually somewhat simple. After he was approached about the bank job, Edson approached a few people about a bank job of his own. Edson had worked with a band of thieves known as the Rufus Ring on a number of bank robberies in New York. So when he learned that the Northampton National was looking to upgrade its security and that he would be working with them, he tipped the ring off. The ring used the attic of the building behind me as their base of operations. For those of you not from, this, from the area, this is and was Bridge Street School, a local elementary school. So that explains who managed to get the money, but how exactly did they do it? Here's a hint. Edson didn't use the wax key for creating a better fitting copy. And since they knew who the only one to have the combination to the lock was, it was somewhat easy for them to kidnap the cashier. I don't really want to go into details here, so let's just say they persuaded the cashier to tell them the combination. With the key and combination safely in their possession, there's nothing stopping the ring from going to the bank after it closed and making withdrawal. In total, 1.6 million was stolen from the bank. In a modern currency, that's about $26 million, making the Northampton National Bank robbery the single largest robbery in American history. A month later, the first lead in the case appeared. Edson, masquerading as an instant go-between, approached the management of the bank with a ransom note from the ring, demanding $150,000 for the return of the money. The management's offer of $60,000 was shot down twice. Through these exchanges, the Pinkerton Detective Agency was closing the gap. Almost a year after the robbery, the leaders of the ring were arrested, and Edson turned to state's evidence. The lower members of the ring were never charged, and the cash was never recovered. And so ends the story of the Northampton National. So my question to you viewers is this. Why is it that we overlook this robbery? Why do smaller robberies get books and blockbuster movies based on them, while the largest bank heist in American history gets relegated to the footnotes of history and community access television? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks for watching.